Acids and bases are two substances that are quite opposite to each other. Let's talk about acids first. Acids. An acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ions. That's a hydrogen atom that's lost an electron and that's into an aqueous solution. In other words, um, it releases it into water. An aqueous means water. Examples of acids are hydrochloric acid that's in your stomach, uh, and ethanoic acid, acetic acid that you put on your fish and chips. Some of the properties of acids are that acids have similar properties, that's why they're called acids. Um, acids are corrosive, in other words, they will burn or eat away at, at substances. They have a sour taste. If you think of vinegar or lemon juice, um, you'll know that um, they taste quite sour. They turn a blue litmus paper red, and that's found in your textbook in figure two point, chapter 2.3.2. Uh, they react with some metals and release hydrogen gas. You'll see a bit of a fizz going on. They conduct electricity because of the charged ions that are in the liquid and are neutralized by bases, which are the opposite. And we'll talk about bases in a little while. And that produces uh, that reaction with a base produces water and a salt. An example of that is hydrochloric acid, which is the stuffs in your stomach, and sodium hydroxide, which is caustic soda, which is a really nasty, very strong base. If they two mix together, you'll end up with water, and sodium chloride, which is table salt. Acids can cause some really nasty injuries, and this is an example of an acid burn of someone's eye. Here's a, an orange, which has citric acid, and when you put blue litmus paper, or it's, it's sort of purpley blue litmus paper, you can see that the part of it that's touching the orange has turned red. The strength of acids, um, well, acids, Acid is a uh, substance that's made up of a number of atom, different atoms. Could be two, could be a whole stack of them. And for example, a, a molecule of nitric acid contains a hydrogen atom. It also contains a nitrogen atom and three oxygen atoms. They're all um, bonded together uh, into this substance called nitric acid. And nitric acid can give out hydrogen atoms, or they have hydrogen atoms in their molecules and they can give out hydrogen ions. Um, the acids that we work in laboratory are not pure substances, but they're substances of acid mixed with water. When the acid is, is mixed with water, some of the hydrogen atoms in the acid are released to form hydrogen ions. The strength of an acid depends on how many hydrogen ions are released. And an acid is a strong one if it releases uh, most of its molecules release hydrogen ions in a solution. That means there's a real high concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. Uh, nitric acid is an example of a strong acid, and so are hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. So they release almost all of their hydrogen atoms into the solution as hydrogen ions. Um, we can also look at a weak one. <clears throat> a weak acid is only only rele it releases a few of its hydrogen into the solution. An example of a weak acid is vinegar, which still has that sour taste, but 
is nowhere near as strong or as corrosive as something like sulfuric or hydrochloric acid. And here's an example of a picture. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and you can see lots of hydrogen ions being released into the liquid or solution. Whereas the vinegar or acetic acid, only um, very few hydrogen ions are released. So it doesn't have the same acidity. Number of hydrogen ions in an acid solution depends on the strength of the acid. Obviously we talked about strong and weak acids. Um, the strength of some acids um, we'll have a look at in your textbook on page 58 and the concentration of the acid. So if you dilute the acid a lot, then it won't be as strong as one that is very concentrate. Here's an example of some acids some strong acids, hydrochloric, nitric and sulfuric, and a whole lot of weak acids um, there. And you can stop the video if you like and have a look at these. Hydrochloric acid is the acids in your stomach. It's very strong. If you ever throw up, um, you'll probably remember that your throat and maybe even your mouth and, and even your nose might have been had that burning feeling. And the reason is because you've thrown up acid in, onto your tissues and it's now irritating them. So it's quite a strong acid in your stomach. Carbonic acid is the acid that's made when carbon dioxide is put into fizzy drinks. And that's why there is that sort of, um, not sour taste, but that uh, tart taste, if you like, with uh, fizzy drinks is because there's a very weak acid in the solution. Bases, on the other hand, release hydroxide ions. And um, you use a weak base every time you use a soap. And if a base can be dissolved in water, it's also known as an alkali. And the way soap is made, if you remember from what we talked about in class, is basically getting fat from animals. So you get the, the fat from the animal carcass and you mix it with sodium hydroxide and that forms soap. Um, and that's what you wash yourself in the shower and bath with. Um, the solution that a base forms when it's dissolved in water is called an alkaline solution. And bases such as caustic soda can burn you really badly because they're highly reactive and they're very caustic, which means that they, they're um, quite corrosive. So they need to be careful with bases as well as acids. And all bases have similar properties. Bases are caustic, that means they're able to burn. They have a soapy, slimy feel. So if you, um, or well, soap is a good example, but Things like carb soda, if you put that in water, you'll find that it has a slippery feel. It turns red lips paper blue, has a bitter taste. They conduct electricity because there's charged um, ions in the solution. And they're neutralized by acid, producing water and a salt. And again, a good example of that is sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. Pardon me, hydrochloric acid forms sodium chloride, which is table salt and water. Bases form hydroxide ions in a solution. The strong bases form lots of hydroxide ions, while weak bases produce a few. So it's very similar to the strong and weak acids. The strength of different bases is shown in the next table, in the table in your, in your textbook. Um, an alkaline solution turns red litmus paper blue, and there you can see some of toothpaste. 
And there we have uh, that table we were talking about with all of the base on a um, table and whether they're strong or weak and what their names are. Cement is an example of a base um, with the um, lime being involved with the cement, very um, alkaline. And then also with cakes, the uh, rising agent in baking powder uses um, uh, 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 can use a, a base to do that, something like carb soda. pH is the concentration of hydrogen ions is related to the uh, concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. It's measured using the pH scale. Um, in an acidic solution, there's more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions available. On, in, in contrast with an alkaline solution has more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. Pure water is neutral and so that means that the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions are equal. Uh, it has a pH of 7 and acids have a pH of less than 7 while bases have an alkaline solutions have a pH of greater than 7 and we talked about that as the pH is the negative log of the um, concentration of the uh, hydrogen ions. So if the concentration of a neutral solution is a minus 7, or 10 to the minus 7 rather, which is a pretty small number, then it means that the um, pH will be the negative of that index, but the index being negative 7, so the negative of that is 7. Blood is important with a pH, and the pH of blood is important, and it's between 7.3 and 7.4. So in fact, blood is just very slightly alkaline. There's a pH scale. As we talked about it, it's a logarithmic scale, so that each um, interval on this represents a power of 10. So for instance, the difference between distilled water and stomach acid is actually um, there, there are six from one from seven to one is is uh, an interval of six but that's actually ten to the six so it means that stomach acid is a million times more acidic than distilled water which is pretty amazing and even lemon juice which is three if you look at tap water six five, four, three, so there's a, uh, um, a, an interval or a gap of three on the pH scale, but that actually is a 10 to the three gap. So in other words, lemon juice is a thousand times more acidic than tap water. And look, there are different indicators. Some indicators like litmus will just show either um, neutral or basic or acidic, whereas other uh, indicators will show a range of colours and in particular the universal indicator will show you a range of colours depending on the pH. Measuring it, um, we can use the indicators which colours will show what the pH is. Um, a common one is in, uh, indicator is litmus and it's red when it's acid and blue when it's in the base. Um, litmus doesn't tell you the pH, but other indicators like universal indicator will. And we've just had a look at the indicators and how they change according to pH. Another way of measuring pH is using a pH meter. And in your textbook on figure 2.37 in chapter 2, you can actually see one of those being used. Monitoring pH, swimming pools are really important to be monitored, their pH, and it should be between 7.4 and 7.6. And one of the reasons for that is that the bacteria and algae can't grow into it and it keeps the water healthy. Um, the pool changes continually when people swim in it, um, dust and stuff drops in it, it's 
new water's put in it or the sun breaks down the chlorine that's added to the water to make it safe. Um, so a pool needs to be measured using pH and then chemicals put in there to keep the pH correct. Liver and, uh, river and creek water are often um, sampled as well by environmental protection authorities to make sure that they are not um, having pollution or even if the pH changes it may affect the, the life that is within that or the environment. And here is a pool pH meter, a meter that's being used to test pool pH. Um, it's also important about in gardening and the pH of soil is really important with some plants. Different types of plants require pH ranges to grow well. Grow well. Uh, lemon trees produce more fruit when planted in acidic soil. Things like camellias and rhododendrons and azaleas grow much better and flower much better when they're in acidic soil. Uh, fig trees produce more fruit when the soil is alkaline. So do things like peas and beans. They grow better when the soil is alkaline rather than acidic. So um, you go through this if you wish and certainly stop and go back through it if that's going to help you. And good luck with the, the um, topic. Oh, and the other thing, of course, is that <clears throat> um, particular care needs to be taken with anyone using things like dyes, creams, lotion. The wrong pH can burn or irritate the hair in the skin, and that's why they usually test um, some of these substances on a skin just to make sure that someone isn't sensitive to those.